Thank you, uh, Tony. Uh, very good morning, very good afternoon, or very good evening, wherever you are in the world today. So, um, as introduced by Tony, um, my name is Yati. I'm from Petronas and I'm involved in the resource development and management for uh, hydrocarbon resources in Malaysia. So, first of all, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity uh, to share some of my thoughts and insights uh, with regards to CCS, especially uh, from a Petronas perspective. I will share my content. So in in November, um, in November last year, uh, Petronas announced uh, our. Sorry, yes. Uh, can I make this full screen? Uh, full screen. Sorry. So in November last year, uh, Petronas we announced our aspiration to achieve net zero carbon emission by 2050. As part of our holistic approach uh, to sustainability, which is aligned to our statement of purpose to be a progressive energy and solutions partner and reaching lives for a sustainable future. So, um, so with the target set for 2050, uh, Petronas continues to intensify our efforts towards reducing uh, scope one and two of the greenhouse gas emissions from our assets uh, by delivering continuous improvement in our operational excellence and deploying innovative operations and technology and CCUS is one of the key technology that has been identified as our focus area. So together with these efforts, Petronas will also pursue new avenues of revenue uh, creation via investments in the nature-based solutions, as well as uh, creating greater accessibility to cleaner and uh, to cleaner energy solutions. So, so that's part of uh, Petronas net zero carbon emission aspiration. As Petronas moves towards low carbon energy, CCS becomes a business imperative as it is currently the most cost efficient solution available for large scale emissions reduction. The growing importance and opportunity of CCS to Petronas in reaching our GHG emission target is very clear. Our first uh, CO2 storage study was actually done in 2005 and it was done in partnership with uh, JGC and Mitsubishi Japan. And over the years, we have updated our CO2 storage atlas for Malaysia. The main objective of our storage atlas is to identify potential storage sites from depleted oil and gas reservoirs, as well as saline aquifers. This will facilitate selection of sites which are suited for future CO2 sequestration projects and to document the total capacity uh, uh, for CO2 storage for Malaysia. So after establishing the potential storage sites, we worked on our Malaysia CO2 sequestration area development plan, or we call it ADP for short. And the main objective to establish is this ADP is to so that we can have an idea and we can develop our notional development plan for high CO2 fields, sequestration hub, including the development concepts, the cost estimates, the commercial and economic evaluation of it as well. And through our area development plan, we match the CO2 source to nearby fields in what we call CO2 source to site mapping. And this is where uh, we want to achieve economies of scale via a CCS hub and cluster concept. So why do we need or why do we aspire to develop a CCS uh, hub and cluster? Well, first of all, uh, de developing a hub or cluster will help reduce costs through sharing of infrastructure. Yeah, as you all know that uh, CCS projects are really capex intensive uh, projects and it requires a lot of help to make it um, take off. Also, a hub and cluster concept will reduce commercial risk uh, for storage um, versus a point to point uh, project. Yeah? So having emitters that comes from various sources would help reduce the risk uh, you know, when you have uh, downtown and whatnot. It also helps to uh, enable capture of small volume of CO2 sources. And finally, uh, it will enable us to reach out to other regions uh, where CCS in that regions uh, do not 
have uh, access uh, to suitable local storage. In the case of Petronas um, in Malaysia, uh, based on our studies, uh, we do have excess capacity uh, for CO2 storage. Uh, and uh, hence, we aspire to be a regional sequestration hub in the future. Our three focus areas uh, in terms of um, amplifying value from CCS, um, our first focus area is in terms of um, CO2 solutions uh, for producing and new gas fields development, where we look at innovative and cost effective uh, capture, transport, storage and utilization technologies to monetize our high CO2 fields. We do have quite a few high CO2 fields in Malaysia and the range con the fields contain CO2 ranges from 20% to up as high as 70%. So indeed a challenge for us. And this is where we look for uh, to have collaboration, to, to have joint experience in active uh, CCUS projects and also players in order to build our operational capabilities. Our second focus area for Petronas is to uh, have CO2 storage as a new revenue stream for us. Uh, this we uh, link to my earlier uh, message where uh, our aspiration is to establish integrated local original CCS hubs in Malaysia. Yeah? And this would require us to uh, formulate uh, attractive business as well as commercial models. The third area that uh, we're focusing on is in terms of utilization, uh, where we convert CO2 into reusable products. Yeah? And that would require us to understand the business case for utilization and the ability to scale up uh, our, um, our products and also to find potential market opportunities for these products. Yeah? So uh, those are the three focus areas that currently Petronas is looking at in terms of amplifying our value from CCUS. So what does it take to ensure a success successful implementation of CCS, including accelerating the, uh, the deployment of CCS at scale? Yep. Uh, in our views, there is a, a few things, you know, it requires in order for us to be successful, it requires a lot of levers mo moving together, you know, like a perfect machine eh, to drive the success of CCS. Um, the first one would be in terms of policies and regulations. I think the earlier speakers talk a lot about uh, having the right policies, the right regulations uh, to make this happen. Yeah? So examples of policies that uh, that is required is, you know, strategic targets and commitments from the government, consistent carbon capture requirement, as well as having emissions performance in place. Yeah? In terms of regulation, some examples are uh, having a CCS legal and uh, regulations framework, um, you know, long-term liabilities uh, provisioned, and guidelines, example, in terms of uh, MMV, measurement, monitoring, and verification of the CCS projects. Yeah? So these are some of the examples of policies and regulations that must be in place. Uh, secondly, it's in terms of technology and capability. And, um, you know, I, I mentioned that, you know, CCS is a very capex intensive project. So it, there, there is really a requirement to have technologies that could drive down costs, you know, low cost, and the technology have to be innovative, and that would require global collaboration among uh, all the players in the industry, as well as the government. Yeah? So, you know, really, I think uh, CCUS Asia Network is a very good example on how this is definitely a positive move yeah? uh, to further accelerate and motivate uh, the deployment of CCS within the Asia. Yeah, so we're li really looking forward to that. Another part is in terms of capability, uh, where really we, we need to, you know, train and upskill our uh, local talent, as well as having the ability to attract um, experienced foreign talent as well, and to work and collaborate with us. And it also, uh, you know, requires us working with academia, you know, universities in terms of um, ensuring that there's CCUS academic courses that's being offered uh, in these uh, ed in these uh, universities. Yeah? And um, well, and definitely, you know, knowledge community uh, within the CCUS expertise, uh, which, uh, I, like I mentioned, I think Asia, Asia CCUS Network is a, a good example for that. 
thirdly is uh, in terms of, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're in a business way. We want to make money. So at the, the third, uh, I think, key, uh, you know, requirement in making CCS a success is having um, the right business and commercial model. Yeah. And um, that would require, you know, example, a lot of financial support, um, you know, examples of financial and the science financial support should come from you know governments as well as financial institutions in the country you know for example in terms of tax credit yeah uh, a very good example is uh, the 45q in us where because of the 45q uh, in us uh, it had you know helped create more than 30 new ccus projects uh, to take off yeah so so that shows how critical uh, financial support is uh, when it comes to CCUS and CCS. Yeah. Another example would be, you know, uh, investments by the government in the areas of uh, CCS. Also, R&D, uh, research and uh, development grants, as well as fundings. And also, um, you know, perhaps also low interest rates, yeah? uh, low or zero interest rates that, um, that, uh, that would definitely help the projects fly. So, um, so that actually uh, sums up my uh, sharing for today. Uh, so, in, in in summary, I would like to stress that really, in order for us to uh, you know ensure the success of CCS or CU CCUS, it requires a lot of levers moving together. It requires collaboration from the government, various collaboration with with the industry players. Uh, you know, whether it's the operator, the NOCs, IOCs, as well as the service companies. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Yeti, for a very comprehensive uh, uh, presentation. Uh, so uh, it's great to see um, everyone's thinking on this. And yes, I agree, we do need to line up the stars to make CCS happen in this region and also around the world. And so uh, I do have a question here. Uh, so Petronas, I mean, uh, you did discuss Petronas um, strategy, net zero strategy, and also CCS plans, a uh, very ambitious plan to build up regional hubs and uh, to accept CO2 from other countries, potentially. Uh, so in your opinion, what mechanism may be used to bring together these emitters and storage providers? Any thoughts on that? Um, very good question, Tony. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what mechanism do we need in place to bring the emitters, uh, you know, uh, sources together, right? Eh? Yeah. Well, um, um, I think so, I, I would have to repeat some of my points earlier yeah, uh, in terms of what are the key success factors uh, because yeah. it's very much related. The first one would definitely be in terms of policies. Yeah? We need policies that are supportive of uh, CCUS yeah, and drive the deployment of CCUS in the region. Uh, and, and these policies can be in terms of incentives. It can also be in terms of, you know, penalties, you know, a way where you kind of like penalize uh, emitters. So it forces right. people yeah, to adopt yep. CCS uh, in, in, in their business. Yeah? So first one is policies. Uh, the second one is uh, legal and regulatory. Um, so, you know, as part of my role in, um, you know, Malaysia Petroleum Management. So our role is actually as a um, regulator. We're also the shaper and enabler of the upstream industry uh, in the, uh, oil and gas in Malaysia. So we look a lot. Uh, we 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 look a lot uh, a lot on the uh, regulatory that's available. And uh, for example, in Malaysia, we don't really have a very clear specific laws on CCS yet uh, to govern or facilitate the development of CCS. So that is something that we're currently working on. And examples also in terms of cross-border movement of the CO2, you know, especially now we're going global and, you know, there are some, maybe some regions wanting to transport the CO2 to be stored at other regions. So that kind of legal and regulatory has to come in place. Yeah. The third one is definitely, I can't stress enough, is collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Uh, you know, it is collaboration has to come across the entire CCUS value chain. Yeah, and it should yeah. be between government, countries, you know, uh, IOCs, NOC, service provider, everybody, everybody in the industry have to come together and collaborate. Yeah, and uh, finally, is in terms, I think, is in terms of public awareness. Yeah, uh, stakeholders management. Yeah, uh, so yeah. I think in may, maybe relatively in Asia, um, CCUS is something that's quite new, you know, quite young compared to Europe or US. So uh, we need to do a lot of this uh, stakeholders management, you know, public awareness, CCUS awareness, 
uh, how it relates to climate change, to our ESG goals and whatnot. Yeah? So definitely a well-planned engagement with the community and also all the relevant stakeholders. So I think those are the four things that uh, you know would you know would be uh, required, uh, Tony. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a challenging question, but I think you provided an excellent answer. Thank you, Tony.